thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. I should warn you that this talk is happening on ground zero. Uh, nothing higher, I'm afraid. Um, so I will talk about kohas uh, associated to curves. And maybe uh, it's worthwhile giving a very short introduction to kohas, although we've seen them uh, several times already. Uh, so some heuristics about kohas. Suppose that you start with A, let's say abelian category. Um, usually it's a small homological dimension. <coughs> so for instance, uh, coherent sheaves on some manifold M, or also some interesting uh, such categories can be built out of a quiver and maybe some potential. And suppose that this abelian category is nice enough that there is some moduli stack of objects of objects in A. So this could be uh, very singular. Uh, but because this is a moduli stack of objects in some abelian category, there is a, uh, let's say, God-given uh, uh, correspondence between two copies of M A and itself, and M A itself, which goes through the stack of short exact sequences. So what is this uh, stack? This is the stack parameterizing uh, short exact sequences like this. And uh, what are these two maps? Well, one of the map assigns the extreme points of the short exact sequence. And the other map assigns the middle. So uh, maybe you get a better intuition if you think about what the fibers look like. So if I take an object here, then the fiber is the Grassmannian of subobjects. And if I take a pair of objects here, then the fiber is somehow all extensions of these two objects. OK, and out of this, you can <coughs> modulo some technical uh, difficulties that you have to uh, be careful about in all cases. Uh, define a structure of an algebra on the cohomology of this uh, moduli stack. So this is some kind of associative algebra. So um, yes, I stress that you have to work to define it because these, these stacks are usually singular. These maps are not regular at all. Um, and also here we have a lot of choices for what cohomology theory you want. You could choose uh, singular uh, cohomology, you could choose Borel-Mo homology, K-theory, uh, mixed hot structure, a lot of, lot of things. Um, so, well, there are many uh, applications of kohas, but I think the two main family of applications are uh, to enumerative geometry. So this is the theory of uh, Donaldson, Thomas invariance. Uh, what uh, Konsevich and Zeubelman relate to the algebra of BPS states, um, and so on. So this is really uh, in the work of Konsevich And uh, Zeugel, no? The BPS was recently established in Britain. Toda or uh, no, 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 no. So <laughs> Russia, it was kind of a definition of morph or somewhat clear uh, matrix mechanics, and it's eventually it applied its physics oh, with okay. original kind of physics. Okay. Um, and then the other type of applications are to say geometric representation theory. Uh, so I think uh, one good example is the kohas that were uh, hidden, at least conjecturally hidden in uh, Hapchak's talk. Uh, and related to this AGT uh, business. Um, and also there's some uh, relation to quantum groups. So Yangian, say Yangian actions on on Nakajima quiver varieties. Um, 
Okay, so uh, in this talk, I will really have the second type of application in mind. Um, and so I want to consider the following type of, uh, of settings. So uh, here I will consider two types of uh, cohomological whole algebra associated to curve. So x is my smooth projective uh, curve complex. And then I have the 1D uh, koha, which would be just uh, take for A the category of coherent sheaves on X. Uh, so this is not uh, Kalabi-Yau. Oh, I forgot to say that nicest uh, examples happen when the category is Kalabi-Yau. So this case is a priori not Kalabi-Yau. And uh, so this, I will talk about this. This is joint work with Eric Vassro. And so it's, it's um, a priori not related to some quantum groups. Uh, because it's not Calabiao. So somehow relation to quantum groups happens only for uh, Calabiao uh, categories. And the 2D picture is when you take for A, the category of coherent sheaves supported on a curve, but the curve is inside some some surface. And uh, here, typically, uh, I will consider the Calabio setup. So uh, category of coherent sheaves on T star of x supported on x. And this is the same thing as category of Higgs or nilpotent Higgs bundles or Higgs sheaves um, on x. OK, so, um, so inside of here, of course, we have the category of coherent sheaves on X, but whose support is zero dimensional. And this corresponds to Higgs uh, torsion sheaves. And so this gives a, a, a subalgebra, which in geometric representation theory corresponds to modifying, say, a vector bundle on a surface at a point, just at a point. If I consider higher rank sheaves, then this would correspond to modifying a vector bundle or torsion-free sheaf on the surface by a one-dimensional torsion sheaf. So this kind of modification, if I understand well, appeared in the Hapcha's talk also. So this is the uh, real motivation to study this kind of things. And then uh, recently, Kapranov and Vasro also considered coherent sheaves on an arbitrary surface, so somehow including two-dimensional, I mean, coherent sheaves with full support on a, on a surface. Um, but this, this, it's OK to define it. I think it's really harder to understand this uh, in this context. Um, OK, and this, this is joint work with Francesco Sala. And it's also uh, work of Minets, especially in this case. Um, OK, so most of my talk will be about this one-dimensional case because I think it's related to a lot. Of, it's not related to quantum groups, but related to some interesting, um, <coughs> interesting um, enumerative geometry on curves. But let me start by saying a little bit about the second case, which in the end should be the most interesting one. But unfortunately, at the moment, it's still uh, quite mysterious. So let me... Um, just say about 2D koha. And again, this will be heuristics. So um, the definition is, is uh, worked out uh, by Salah and, uh, and myself. Um, but um, let me try to tell you uh, what one expects. What I, we don't know how to prove it yet, but there is some kind of heuristic to tell you what this kind of cohomological whole algebra should be as quantum groups. So uh, let's, let's take the following setup. Uh, let's say that uh, A is an abelian category. Suppose that it's homological dimension 2, Calabi-Yau. And let's assume, so it has a modulized stack of object MA. And let us assume that there is another category, which is homological dimension 1. which is uh, not Calabi-Yau, but somehow uh, MA is the cotangent bundle to MB. So typically MB will be smooth. 
because this is homological dimension one, and um, NB, MA can be obtained by uh, I don't know some uh, symplectic uh, quotient of uh, of MB. Cotangent bundle, cotangent bundle. Uh, okay. But if MB is smooth, that means that MA is also smooth. No. I mean, but you're writing it's a cotangent bundle. Yes, this is a stack. Oh, it's a commodal stack. Yes, yes, yes. Everything is a stack. The, at the very end, it will be a moduli space of stable objects. But um, okay, so we consider another type of whole algebra. So here, I said that we consider the cohomology of the moduli stacks. But instead of considering the cohomology, one could, for instance, take FQ points of these moduli stacks and take functions. And then we can define exactly the same thing. So let me denote this by uh, constructible and over FQ of uh, MB. Sorry, but do you want to consider the modes with coefficients and constant sheaf or in some? Uh, yeah, constant sheaf. Yeah, but it's end of the day for three calabio, it's coefficients and coefficients in Upanishad cycles. It's equivalent to three. But for two calabio, it's, it's, it's all multiplied by line and reduced to yeah. zero. Uh, so, then we consider this uh, whole algebra, and in many examples, say quivers, curves, uh, this turns out to be the positive half of some quantum group, uh, let's say GB, and GB, let's suppose that it is something like Katsumudi. Katsumudi algebra. And this Katsumudi algebra, the character of this Katsumudi algebra, is encoded by the so-called Katz polynomials of the category B. So character of GB is given by Katz polynomial, uh, let's say A, B. Uh, so this is a polynomial in one variable. It is a positive integral coefficient. And so this is I mean, roughly, this is a number of indecomposable objects in B. Depends okay, on depends on the class in the K zero and so on. Right. Um, okay, then in this situation, you can guess, you can guess what the cohomological whole algebra of M A will be. So, of course, this is heuristic. Uh, so the coha. So let's say. So uh, H star of M A should be isomorphic to the Yangian of uh, not quite uh, G B, but some extension of G B, where G B certainly contains G B, but this is some extension such that the character of GB, so this is a graded, a Z graded extension, and the character of GB, uh, G tilde B, sorry, is given by the full Katz polynomial. Oops, so here I say this is given by A, B of zero, the constant term of the Katz polynomial, and this given, this is. Uh, Z greater character is given by the full Katz polynomial. So this is the this is the heuristic that allows you to guess what these cohomological whole algebras will be. So I will just run this for the case of uh, uh, coherent sheaves on a curve and see what this uh, suggests. Do you actually want to consider the cohomology or Borel more cohomology? Um, you you can do both. I guess it's better here for this to consider Borel mu homology. Yeah. I mean, which one? I mean, only one of them will be an algebra problem. Right? Uh, no, you can. So it, it's true that when you have a singular stack, it's easier to work with Borel mu homology. In the case of the smooth stack, actually, I prefer the cohomology. Well, it doesn't but matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's. So first of all, examples. Let's say the baby examples is suppose B is a representation of a quiver Q. Um, then 
uh, A is representation of the pre-projective algebra of the quiver. I think this is more or less what uh, occurred in G's talk. And then the, the constructible whole algebra, spherical, is the, oops, say B. Uh, this is the positive half of the uh, Katsumudi algebra associated to Q. Um, By the way, in a general setup, do you want to put positive part of the yam yam? Yes, yes, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, so this uh, whole algebra is the positive half of a, a quantum group associated to quiver Q, and the yang yang and, and the cohomological whole algebra of, let me just write rep pi Q. Uh, then this is the yang yang of the extension GQ, G tilde Q, and this guy here is what acts on the cohomology of Nakajima quiver varieties. And at least conjecturally, this is the same thing as the Smolikov Kunkov uh, Lie algebra. So you should be careful that it is strictly bigger than GQ, some extension of GQ. So um, you're right. Here I'm, I'm working equivalently. But. Uh, yeah, so, so in this case of quivers, there's a natural C star action because this is a cotangent bundle to something. So you have the C star action uh, dilation along the fiber, and then this gives you this uh, equivalent parameter. So I mean the def uh, thank you, but I mean the deformation parameter for the pre-projective algebra. If you study de deformed pre-projective algebra. Ah, not deformed, no. Is there a st there's no statement if you study deformed or what? Um, yeah, I think you, sh you, you can and you should do that, but uh, then you should ask Ben Davis. And this is more or less how um, Molik and Okunkov define their yang yang by considering uh, pre-projective algebra, deformed pre-projective algebra, and then take a specialization to zero, something like that. Uh, okay, but let's, let's see what happens for curves. So first of all, this case of dimension zero, this zero dimension, uh, uh, so torsion sheaves on a, on a surface, essentially. So let's suppose that we start with um, B is coherent sheaves support that zero on some curve X. Then uh, A uh, is coherent sheaves support at zero on the surface. It's, smooth, it's a point on a smooth uh, surface. Um, and then uh, here, the constructible whole algebra is the Heisenberg algebra. This is the classical whole algebra. So this is the Heisenberg algebra, which we can view as the positive half of GL1 hat. And then uh, this cohomological whole algebra. This is the Yangian of GL1 hat. So this is or the positive half. So this is this. Uh, affine Yangen that uh, appears in the AGT uh, business. And um, now let's look at some real examples of uh, corresponding to modifications uh, along a, a curve inside a surface. So suppose that B is coherent sheaves on P1. So A will be Higgs or if you well, Higgs sheaves on P1. And here, the constructible whole algebra is known by work of uh, Kapranov to be the positive half of SL2 hat, actually GL2 hat, if you uh, work a little bit, if you add a little center to this. And so this, this gives you that the cohomological whole algebra of uh, in this case. I'm sorry, what's Q here? What? Q, because this is constructible over FQ. Ah, so this is, this is not cohomological. This, is, uh, this one is the constructible whole algebra. Yes. And this one is the cohomological whole algebra of the cotangent stack. So I'm claiming that essentially you pass from one to the other by, first of all, extending the algebra 
to a z-graded algebra and then taking the affinization of that. The cohesion is the important part of all. You can do both, but if you work equivariantly, they are the same, more or less, up to some grading shift. And so here, uh, MA, you expect that it is going to be the Yangian of uh, GL2 hat. Right, so something like uh, quantum toro I mean, toroidal, I prefer to say elliptic, because this takes into account the center uh, algebra of SL2. Wait a second. Dirac equivalence of Givan and Kronecker theories. It makes sense, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, and then. Uh, for instance, just maybe one more example. So this should work in all cases. So if B is coherent, she is on some elliptic curve. Then the constructible whole algebra of B is this so-called uh, elliptic whole algebra. And, uh, and so you expect that the cohomological whole algebra of MA, in this case, will be something like the Yangian of the elliptic uh, whole algebra. The elliptic whole algebra is some deformation, let's say UQT, of GL1 toroidal, in some sense. And so here, it's really crazy, it's the Yangian of GL1 toroidal. So it is something like positive half everywhere, of uh, GL1 uh, triply graded. So I have no idea if this kind of thing appears somewhere, except in my imagination, but... So you have the definition of the right-hand side? I would say this would be a good definition of this side. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, do you have the definition of this young gun for GL1 hat hat? No, this is heuristic section. Yes. <laughs> No, no. Uh, yeah, but, but this is, it looks like symmetrical with some number of variables, and variables should be like functions of three variables. Yes. Yeah. Variables and three variables. Yes. Okay, yes. Laurent Polynom, yes. Yeah. Uh, and higher genus. And higher genus. So, uh, in higher genus, the whole algebra is kind of identified. You can relate it uh, to some shuffle algebras. You can. Uh, so Katz polynomials exist in the context of any curve. And uh, the funny thing is that if you take the Katz polynomial of the genus G curve and you take the constant term, then you get the, Katz you get the evaluation of the Katz polynomial of the SG quiver, quiver with one vertex and G loops at one. So somehow it means that, I mean, if you take the top part, so if you take H top, of M A for any curve of genus for a curve of genus G, then what you should get is the Yangian associated to the S G quiver. This is the top part. Uh, okay, so I think I abused enough of your gullibility, and so uh, I will move to dimension one case, where we actually can make some some uh, more precise computations. Uh, okay, so D equals one, so one dimensional uh, Koha. So, sorry, what does one dimensional mean if it's not coming out? It means if you have stupid zero potential. Yes. So I will, I will redefine it. But, yes. I agree that it really looks stupid. I will try to argue that in the end it isn't, but... Okay, so uh, let me denote by Koch RD. So X is fixed, so smooth projective curve of genus G. So Koch RD, RD is the stack of coherent sheaves of rank R and degree D. This, is, uh, this contains, as an open substack, the stack of uh, bundles. 
And uh, what is the induction diagram in this case? So I take Koch alpha times Koch beta. Here, let me do it by tilde alpha beta. Koch alpha plus beta. And here, this is the set of all short exact sequences. F, so F beta, G, H alpha. Right, where F beta, say this. So F beta is a coherent sheaf of uh, class beta. H alpha is a coherent sheaf of class alpha. So the fiber here is a quote scheme. And the fiber here, so everything is smooth here, I should say, because we are in the one dimensional situation. Uh, all these stacks are smooth. And this is a linear stack, and this is a proper morphism. The fibers are quote schemes. So here, there is really no, no difficulty at all in defining, let me denote by hx, the direct sum for all rd of the cohomology of Koch rd, constant coefficient, has an algebra structure. Maybe I just say this is q, this is p, so m alpha beta is, uh, so it goes from h star alpha, let me denote this by h star rd, and so h star beta to h star alpha plus beta. And it takes two classes, and you just pull back and push forward. And this defines for you an associative algebra structure. OK, so. There's no slope uh, requirement on? No. Slope on code tilde? No slope? Like you don't require that the short exact sequence is some stability? stability? No, no, no stability. No semi stability here. No, no, no. I want everything. OK, so let me remind you the structure of the cohomology of Koch alpha. And let me first remind you what is the cohomology of Bun or D. This is a classical work of Atiyah and Bot. Um, so you, you pick, so let me just write alpha is, is Rd. So uh, you pick the tautological vector bundle. So tautological vector bundle on bun alpha cross x. So the uh, restriction to x at the point here is precisely the corresponding vector bundle. And then you can take the churn classes of this uh, tautological vector bundle. And using the QNF decomposition, you can write it as a direct sum. Let's say CI gamma E alpha tensor gamma, or maybe gamma dual, where uh, gamma runs in a basis, symplectic basis of H star of X. All right, so this gives you a bunch of classes on uh, bun alpha. All right, just take the tautological class, tautological vector bundle, and take the churn classes and decompose all the Cuneth components. And the theorem of uh, Atiyah Bot tells you that uh, these classes freely generate the cohomology ring of bun. So, then the cohomology ring of bun rd is freely generated by the ci gamma, where i runs from 1 to r, and gamma is in your basis. OK, there's just one subtlety. c1 uh, of the c11 is equal to the degree. So this is not a, 
it's a scalar. But otherwise, uh, this is a free super commutative algebra. So this is the atiyah bot theorem. And this was extended by Heinlott uh, to uh, the case of uh, Koch. And here it's really um, amazingly simple. So you still have your tautological bundle, but now it's a coherent sheaf on Koch alpha times x. And uh, if you look at the cohomology of this stack, so let's assume that r is at least equal to 1, then the cohomology of this stack is freely generated by all churn classes. So, uh, of course, if you take a churn class of uh, C r plus 1, for instance, then this, this will vanish over the open uh, substack of Koch, which consists of vector bundles. But uh, uh, if you look at all of Koch, then you need all of these classes to generate and freely. Also, C11 equal to constant. Also, C11 equal to constant. Yes, the same constant. Uh, okay, and then if R is equal to zero, then uh, you can show that the cohomology of Koch 0D, this is the d symmetric uh, product of the cohomology of Koch 0, 1. And so this is the d symmetric product of h star of x bracket z. So this bracket here comes from the fact that I consider uh, the stack of all degree 1 coherent sheaves. And so there's the BGM uh, here. OK, and in order to make this a little bit more symmetric, let me just make a following observation. This Ci gamma, uh, since you have infinitely many of them and they generate a free algebra, they look like elementary symmetric functions um, in infinitely many variables. So. So I want to write this, so this is uh, better. Uh, uh, this ring is isomorphic to S infinity of H star of X bracket Z. And actually there is a canonical way to identify them. But, okay, so the Z picture. Z is degree plus two, yeah. So here is the picture for this algebra. Uh, so it is graded in this uh, left uh, half. I mean, it has components Z to graded by R and D. Components are in this uh, left right half. And so here we have C, here we have S1, here we have S2, S3, and so on. Uh, so I'm skipping, so this, yes. Okay. And everywhere else we have S infinity. Just see the question, what is S infinity? What's the what? Just see the question, what is S infinity? S infinity, yes, it's not such a stupid question. So, uh, <laughs> so some typical elements <laughs> in S infinity, <laughs> so some typical elements in S infinity are sum of, say, gamma i z i power l. So you should think of symmetric functions in infinitely many variables, but these variables are colored by cohomology class in x. And so when I multiply them, I have to also to use the multiplication in, in x, in the cohomology ring of x. Sorry, but I don't understand, but, but th this is, What's really, this is just a sum, so, so I mean, so, so this is... This is what I mean by in S infinity. So, so it's, not it's like restricted it's symmetric. Not symmetric power or something else. It's, it's like no. restricted, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the algebra of symmetric functions. It's an algebra. It's an algebra, yes. Just like uh, the usual algebra of symmetric polynomials. 
what you wrote it should be symmetric in what? Symmetric. In that? Symmetric here is this, so gamma, sorry. This is gamma, okay, maybe you prefer it like, like this. It's the same gamma everywhere. So it's gamma z positioned on the ith component, gamma zl. Now, position on the ith component. Does this look better? No? So, that, that, so th isn't that the same as to consider this? So it's defined for any vector space, right? Yes. So, uh, so, so isn't the same as it, it, you take this vector space, you consider a uh, tail like series with coefficients in this vector space, and, and then just like, take symmetric algebra of that. Isn't that the same mm -hmm. as what you wrote? Uh, this, you, so, you can, so this, you can say, you can look at the projective limit of SD h star x bracket z where you fix you fix the so this is a projective limit in every given degree cohomological degree mm -hmm. so is it important that what you have so you have s infinity of something so do you use anything about this something actually no it's always isomorphic to a freely algebra generated by these guys Planning s infinity of just of a vector space no you should need something called plane thinking many times but some fixed vector I suppose yeah uh, is it you? So, so that this is what I don't yeah, understand. So, uh, uh, sense, yeah. I mean, are you using some structure on what you have inside the brackets? Yes, so, so if I write, uh, so if I multiply two guys like this, some, so let's call this guy P gamma L. Okay, so gamma is a class in uh, H star of X and L is some positive integer. This is like the power sum function, but colored by the class gamma. So if I multiply P gamma L by P gamma prime L prime, I will get sum for I, uh, say, different from J, gamma Z L I times gamma prime uh, z l prime j plus the sum for all i gamma gamma prime z l plus l prime i still you this makes no sense to you well, okay, go on. I mean, I can't understand this, but I mean, it would be nice if you could, you could just define terms of linear algebra without using this z or anything. I mean, I mean, is so it defined, it's I mean can you just ask, can you just say, is it defined for any vector space or, or, or for a vector space with some additional structure? This is a vector of vector space. I mean, this is a... a, a map from I mean, l l let's forget about the curve and the cohomology. So, so what kind of vector space can you talk about this infinity? So I would take a graded vector space with finite dimensional weight spaces, which is also an algebra. Graded algebra, positively graded algebra with finite dimensional graded piece. So Commutative. You need an algebra structure in the vector space. Yeah, here I multiply. This is the cup product here. So the origin symmetric functions would be, would respond to the case of x is a point? X is a point, yes. Okay. Makes sense? L, L is not negative. L is positive, yes. Here. <laughs> French, French <laughs> uh, L, L has to be greater than zero or gamma has to be non zero. Uh, okay. So now the multiplication, what does the multiplication look like? So now we want to define something like m alpha beta, which will go from s, say, s infinity, tensor s infinity, to s infinity. Of course, this will depend on alpha and beta. Suppose here that the rank of alpha and the rank of beta are all greater than 1. So that would be the, uh, the goal, is to get a precise uh, understanding of these multiplications. 
right? And you also have some multiplication SD test tensor S infinity and S infinity tensor SD. And then you also have some SD tensor SD prime. OK, so the goal would be to, the ideal goal would be to get a, a, a real understanding of all these maps. So if you think a little bit about it, what these maps encode is uh, intersection theory on the quote scheme, right? Because I'm just going to pull back. I'm going to take a pair of tautological classes here and here. I'm going to pull them back. And then I'm going to integrate on this, uh, along this map, which means precisely that I'm going to compute some kind of uh, intersection pairing or integral uh, of uh, product of such tautological classes on the quote schemes. So let me just, just for motivation, um, give you some examples of uh, information that all these maps contain. Uh, okay. So I will be a little bit brief because I'm running out of time, but let's, let's, uh, let's just take x equals p1, and let's just consider some multiplication like this, hr10 OK. Um, and let's assume that uh, I'm going to consider, so classes here, so let's assume that the degree, sum of the degree of the classes that I uh, consider is equal to minus the degree of MR. So in some sense, I'm integrating a top class. Then essentially just by definition, uh, C1 tends to CR is just the integral over a flag variety of the corresponding classes CS. Um, yes, if you interpret this, you, you just look at uh, the um, restriction to the open substack of Koch R0 of P1, which is a trivial bundle. And then you see that everything here restricts to just the trivial bundles. And uh, so you get this by restriction. So this is something like integration on the quote scheme of the trivial bundle. All right, and this is the quote scheme of degree 0 subsheaves. So this is just the Grassmannian, right? So this is, this is just to say that it contains, in particular, uh, Schubert calculus. OK. So this was really very specific. I just take P1, and I take multiplication along a line, right? Now, if I take still P1, but I take some more, uh, more interesting uh, products. So if I take still x equals p1, but now I take some e greater than 0, and I consider the multiplication like this, say r e, well, so I take uh, h r1 e tensor h r2 minus e goes to h r0. So now I'm just, I'm not looking for subsheaves of the trivial vector bundle of degree 0, but subsheaves of the trivial vector bundle of some degree that could be negative. All right, so then, so again, suppose that the degree of c1 plus the degree of c2 is minus the degree of the multiplication, then uh, C1 times C2, and this algebra, 
is the integral over something which we can denote by more e, p1 um, Grassmannian of some corresponding classes. And so this is, uh, this thing here is the set of subsheaves of uh, the trivial uh, vector bundle on P1 of a possibly negative degree. And so this is, this is the quote, I can write like this, quote O R, R2 minus E. And this contains the set of maps from pi P1 to the Grassmannian such that the degree of phi is e. So there's some compactification of this thing. And so this is the, by definition, this is this quantum uh, cohomology. So if you just take p1 and take product of two elements, then you get quantum cohomology of the Grassmannian. So this is quantum Schubert calculus. It looks like you can do what's called quasi-map quantification, so it's like some... some yeah, some, some... Yes, yes, some, something like that. So now if x is equal to, if x is arbitrary, so I will just say a few words. Uh, so there are two types of interesting two types of interesting uh, intersection theory on quote schemes. So there is intersection theory on the, on the trivial vector bundle. So um, in general, this is not smooth, so you need some virtual class integration and so on. But um, this, this gives you essentially what is, at least in some paper, uh, called Witten TQFT. So it behaves like uh, some TQFT on, on the cohomology of the Grassmannian. So I still take similar setup, but now I take the curve of higher genus, and I look at intersection theory of quote scheme of the trivial bundle. So in order to do this properly, in order to integrate on this quote scheme, you have to use virtual classes and, and so on. But this is what this Witten TQFT does. But then there's another theory, which is somehow nicer, is when you take the quote scheme of a general, general stable bundle. And now this guy is smooth, and this gives what is called the weighted Uh, Witten TQFT. So here, again on the Grassmannian. So here the reference is a recent paper of Thomas Gola. So it still gives you a TQFT. Um, and it contains a bunch of interesting numbers, like Verlinden numbers. And on, cohomology of the on cohomology of the Grassmannian. What, what, what does the word on mean? Yeah. It means it's a uh, Frobenius algebra structure. Okay. Um, okay, there are other motivations to study this algebra, but I think I would definitely run out of time. So I'll just say very, very briefly uh, so there is also a relation to, uh, say, geometric Langlands. So you want to understand uh, the x algebra of a certain category of Eisenstein sheaves on, say, Koch x, right? And this x algebra uh, acts on um, on H, or well, no, it acts on a big product of powers of H. But, okay, so I just wrote this, I'm, 
if you want to know more, you can ask uh, me. And then this X algebra hopefully looks like a kovanov lauda hooke algebra for uh, the category of coherent sheaves on X. So uh, there's hope that this can be used to construct some categorification of, of quantum groups. For instance, of the elliptic whole algebra. OK. So, um, all right, I need to tell you something about the structure of this cohomological whole algebra. So essentially, there's a, a, some kind of presentation for this algebra. OK. Structure of HX. All right, so first of all, uh, you can always multiply any class uh, by a tautological class. Right, so I want to introduce some kind of universal tautological ring, which I denote by H like this. And this is just a free ring generated by some class of CI gamma. All right, let me maybe underline them. So it's just a free polynomial, super commutative polynomial algebra. And this acts, so, and, and it is also, uh, so it's a uh, co commutative Hopf algebra. Uh, where I just use the usual rule for taking the co-product of a uh, churn class. So delta of ci is the sum of ck tensor cl, k plus l equals i. And here cl is the sum over all gamma. Okay, so this formula defines for me a co-commutative Hopf algebra structure on this polynomial ring. Um, so it's, it, I mean, it does to the churn classes what you expect when you uh, um, have a filtration of your vector bundle, for instance. And what I say is that Hx is a H uh, module algebra. in the following sense. So H acts freely, actually, on each H alpha by multiplying by the corresponding tautological class. Right? This is an abstract ring, but if I fix alpha, then each of these uh, can become, I can evaluate these, if you want, uh, on the tautological uh, coherent sheaf. And this is compatible with multiplication. So P applied to U1 tensor U2 is uh, P, so it's PI1 U1 applied to PI2 U2. All right, so usual compatibility between a coproduct. And this, this comes from the projection formula. So this is now nothing difficult or mysterious. And so now let me describe uh, the subalgebra, which corresponds to the zero dimensional sheaves. So if you want the vertical subalgebra, what if it were a quantum group, you would call the Carton subalgebra. So um, let me denote by H0 is the direct sum of the cohomology of Koch 0L. So this, yes. Um, so here's the proposition. This algebra, this is the easy part. This can be totally uh, explicitly determined. 
So H0 is a shuffle algebra. So remember that this is the direct sum for all L of SL. And the multiplication goes like this. If I have P of Z1, ZL. So these guys are colored by cohomology classes. But, and I multiply this by Q of Z1, Zn. Then this is the uh, sum over all subsets of 1, N plus L, such that the cardinality of I is equal to uh, L of, so the kernel of this shuffle multiplication, so this is somehow the, it's the important ingredient, is like this, so I is an I and J is not an I, is 1 plus omega IJ, ZI minus ZJ, and here it is P, where I, I apply to the variables corresponding to I and Q to the variables corresponding to not I. Okay, so here, omega, this is in S2, uh, and this is uh, the class of the diagonal. Okay, so this really looks like a Yang R matrix, something like a Yang R matrix. Um, and indeed, indeed, uh, there exists, but I'm not going to write it because I'm really running out of time. But uh, H0 has a presentation as a Yangian. So with Yangian relations. All right, so it's generated by this P1 gamma, sorry, no, P gamma L. Um, for gamma in pi and L greater or equal to zero, satisfying some relation. Okay, so this is somehow the rank zero part, so this would be the cohomological uh, Hecke algebra. And now I have to tell you how it acts on uh, higher rank uh, part. So I need to take, this was the Hecke algebra, and now I need to define the Hecke operators. Oop. So the Hecke operators. Um. Right. So let me take P, Z1, Zd. So I, I need to define the map from Sd, tensor S infinity to S infinity. And this is Hrd. Right, so this map de depends on the rank of the bundle to which I'm applying it. And so P of Z1, Zd applied to Q of uh, an infinite family of variables. This is uh, the sum for all i and n. So this is a shuffle multiplication um, where I insert d elements inside uh, infinitely many elements, countably many elements. So this is, uh, makes good sense. And uh, again, I have the same type of kernel. P of Z i, Q of Z different from i, and there's a similar formula in the in the other direction. Should I worry about the convergence of this product now? No, you should worry about the possible poles. And uh, it's true, I'm cheating a little bit here, but uh, you should not worry about convergence of the product because this, I, I mean, but here. I mean this restricted product. So you only take finitely many of these guys at a time. But have an infinite number of j's. 
I have an infinite number of j's, and I have finitely many i's, but I only take finitely many pairs. I take this term in only finitely many pairs i, j. Ah, so the omega is nilpotent. And omega is nilpotent, actually, yes. But uh, no, 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 omega is not nilpotent. It's a class of diagonal and so It's a class of the diagonal, yes. So it's omega is sum of gamma tensor gamma dual. No, uh, no yes, omega is nil potent, but uh, for instance, you can have omega 1, 2, omega 1, 3, omega 1, 4. This is never zero. Uh, okay, so there's a similar formula, S infinity tensor SD to S infinity. Okay. And the final formula, I have to stop after that. Okay, this is somehow, I would say, the easy part. Easy part, because you're multiplying rank 0 by rank 1. Now, uh, you want to understand the relation between, uh, if you think about Kohas, two modifications along we have dimension one. Um, so here uh, we don't have a general formula, but somehow we have enough, enough to, to give a presentation of the algebra. So let me just say higher rank product. So for any R and D, I have this, 1, 1, D. This is the one element in S infinity, right? And you should think that this is uh, rank 1 and degree D bundles. And I multiply by 1 R, R, D plus 1 minus G. If I stayed like this, this would be a degree 0 element, right? But uh, I also need to understand what happens when I take higher rank, higher degree classes. And this is equal to r plus 1 power g times the sum uh, i is equal to n of the product for i and i of d plus 2, 1 minus g, omega i minus zi. So this is some explicit guy. This is some Euler form. And you might think that this is the important part of the data, but actually this, this is the hard thing. So this is, this is a, uh, for this you need to use some, some theory. Uh, so this is the number of points of a finite quote scheme. And if you do this, for more general uh, uh, ranks and degree, here you would get some Verlinde number. Right, so this is a very simple Verlinde number. But if you were to write more complicated products, not rank 1, rank R, then here you'd get some really complicated expression. This is, this is due to Hola. I mean, the value of these numbers is due to uh, Hola. Okay, and finally the theorem, and I will stop here. So theorem is that H is isomorphic to the H algebra, so H module algebra, generated by all these one RDs, uh, R and D, modulo, relations above. So these, all these, these three types of relations, the structure of the cohomological Hecke algebra, the Hecke operators, cohomological Hecke operators, and just this multiplication, right? So this is like a, uh, yeah, this, this multiplication, this is enough to, in principle, determine all the, all these intersection numbers. Now I'm not claiming that it is easy, but, uh, Definitely the information is contained in here. 
and I don't have time to talk about the application to computation of the cohomology ring of stable vector bundles, I mean of moduli space of stable vector bundles, so I will stop here. But <laughs> Can you incorporate the Slovenia somehow into this computation? I mean, is there anything? Is it? Did it get something interesting with you? I mean, you and Eric had this work when we had elliptic curve and then somehow. Ah, okay. Okay, yes. Um, so everything here depends on this gamma. So I would say the Prometheus is kind of. Seen. So for me, in the, in the complex setup, the Frobenius means that I need to work not in the category of vector spaces, but in the category of GSP2G modules, in the monoidal category of GSP2G modules. This would be... Um, yeah, that's not very clear in my mind, but... Uh, so, I mean, this Frobenius is all these cohomology classes, the gamma. Question about your ex early examples when you had uh, the Youngian of GL2 hat versus the Youngian of uh, GL1 double hat. Yes. Did you use the same cohomology theory to, to, to get those? Yes. I mean, this was heuristic. I don't know how to prove it. But, uh, yes. So you didn't need elliptic cohomology to get to the Youngian of. Uh, no, no. No, no elliptic cohomology here. So if you use K theory, then you should get not the Yangian, but the quantum affine algebras. Uh, if you use elliptic, whole, uh, elliptic uh, cohomology, then you have to work, uh, look at the work of Yaping Yang and Gu Fang Zhao. And here they, they say it's something like the Felder uh, quantum groups. But I, I, don't, I don't know this well. It's just strange that, that from P1 you got uh, only GL2, but from elliptic curve you already got GL1 half. Uh, not strange, because... It's a two-tor. P1 is this, uh, elliptic curve is this, and so uh, this is the diagram, Dinkin diagram of SL2. This is the Dinkin diagram of GL1 hat. This is the affine Dinkin diagram uh, and for genus G curve, then you, you should have to look at this guy. And here, somehow all the interesting information is hidden in this extension. Because this is just a free, if you look at the Katsumudi algebra associated with this, this is just a free, freely algebra. But um, then you have to look at uh, G tilde. And then G tilde really depends on the genus. And, uh, and so somehow, uh, here, the subtle difference between the Yangian, so between Yangian of G is really different even as a graded vector space from G bracket T. And the difference between the two is important, especially in higher genus case. 